What's up guys, Zach here with American Smoke, and today we're gonna to be doing a burn off slash seasoning of our all new original PK 300 grill. This is the last time you'll ever see it this pretty in the rest of its existence. It's so shiny, it's so clean, it's so unused, it's so needs a baptism by fire. And so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Baptism by fire on the PK 300. Y'all make sure to stick around because I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know. So first step in preparing your PK grill for your first cook is actually a pretty simple one. Uh, when they manufacture this thing, it goes through a lot of different processes and a lot of different chemical cleans and things like that as they cure and make this metal into the beautiful piece of grilling machinery that it is. But in that process, you can have leftover chemicals that get on your grates, inside your grill, all that sort of stuff. Just nasty stuff that you wanna cook off before you cook meat in your PK. And so step one is we're gonna be removing this grate for now. I'm just setting it right here on the handy dandy shelf. Step two. This is gonna hurt my soul just a little bit. I can't wait to have this behind me. This is gonna dirty up my grill a little bit. We're going with a full chimney today because we want a lot of heat. We're gonna to try to get this grill up at around the 500 degree mark. That way we burn off any chemicals and we get it ready for, you know, the real deal. So we've got our chimney full. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tear off a little fire starter. As I've said before, I always use my bag. All right, now that we've got that in there, we're just gonna put a little fire to it and get these babies fired up and get them nice and hot. One thing to note, if you are a new PK owner and you are not so big on reading the owner's manual, I have done that for you. And since what we've talked about before is that this is uh, cast aluminum, aluminum has a lower melting point than steel, just a little north of a thousand degrees. So that is why they do not recommend that you use any sort of charcoal lighter. They do not want you spraying that, fl that flammable liquid onto your charcoals and we've all seen how it'll run down into the bottom of your grill and then just burn. It could possibly damage the bottom of your capsule and you know, that's not gonna be a good day right there. So what you wanna do is you either wanna use one of these dump them over into the grill once it's how you want it, or you can make a little pile and use something like a tumbleweed or, or a torch or something like that to light your charcoal that way, but you do not really want to get into charcoal lighter. You shouldn't be using that cheap, nasty stuff anyway. It leaves a taste on the food and it's expensive. You've already spent a lot of money on a the grill. There's no point in you wasting all that money on some lighter fluid. All you need is some heat, come on. Come on, we'll see you on a bit when this thing gets fired up. So our charcoal chimney has gotten nice and hot. We've got a little flames licking out of the top. So all we're gonna do now is we're just gonna spray these out. Right there, just like that. Next steps, remove the lighter, put the grate into place. That is hot as fire. A little something you might need to know about the PK. It is going to absorb heat much better than a normal grill, which means that the grill itself is going to be extraordinarily hot. It's not like a steel grill where you can touch it a little bit and not get really burned. This thing's gonna get hot, hot, hot. What I wanna do is I wanna make sure that these are open pretty much all the way. Really don't matter, you get it open all the way. And then we're gonna come down low and we're gonna make sure that we've got good air flow on the bottom. Pretty much if you pull them, if you push them all the way to one side, it opens all the way. And if you pull them all the way towards you, it closes all the way. So you'll just sort of get used to that. And I'll sort of get used to that about where it is as far as airflow is concerned. But we're just gonna let this go for about 30 minutes or so. And that should burn off any chemicals that are in there. And it should clean anything that might be left in there from the manufacturing process. One thing that I did want to also talk about while we're doing this, the need to season. If you have had steel grills and other types of grills, uh, there's always call to season it. And most of the time that's just done with like some spray canola oil or some spray olive oil or something like that. And you just sort of coat the whole grill down. And what that does in that situation is it creates a polymerization on the metal, 
which is just like it, it just reduces the, the oil down to the point where it bonds to the metal and it creates a waterproof barrier, you know, science. But with this cast aluminum, that's not really needed because you're never gonna, uh, you know, you can spray this thing down with water every day and it's not gonna rust. You know, you've all seen the aluminum can that's been outside forever and it's just sort of sitting there. Doesn't rust. This is aluminum, not gonna rust. I've seen a couple of videos where people did season theirs and I think that's pretty much just out of habit, out of tradition of christening a new grill. If you wanna do it, you can. I'm not gonna season mine. I've got stainless steel grates. I've got an aluminum cast grill here. And so it's never gonna rust. There's really no reason to season. Eventually, just with the cooking of foods, there's gonna be a lot of buildup on the metal anyway. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. All I really wanna do is heat it up, burn it out, and ready to throw a steak on this bad boy. So uh, we'll see y'all here in just a little while whenever we finish the burn off process and we'll move on from there. All right, so we're about 20 minutes into this burn off on this PK grill. I just wanted to share a little bit of information with you guys. I got my Thermalworks infrared gun right here and right there at the vent, I was telling you earlier that the whole surface of this grill is gonna get a lot hotter than what you're used to, but right there at the vent, we're looking at over 500 degrees, 562, six. And if you comb all over the surface, there's not really a place on it that's below 400 degrees. Very much careful with the babies running around. Do not let them touch this grill because it is gonna get hot. That is what it's made to do, and that's what it's gonna do. All right, so it's been around 40 minutes now, and I can tell you one thing, the smell coming out of this unit has changed completely. There was a very much kind of a chemically smell. If you've ever done a burnout on a grill, you know what smell I'm talking about. Uh, that has kind of all went away, and you know if it was 500 and something degrees on the outside surface, it was show sure enough smoking on the inside. And so any sort of chemical that was left in there from the manufacturing process has now been eliminated. You don't have to worry about getting that on your food. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or anything like that, just let me know. We are about to uh, throw some steaks on the PK and you will see that in an upcoming video as well. This will be the, uh, the christening, the first time, the first run. We're gonna see how it goes and you will definitely see that in an upcoming video. So y'all make sure and check that out. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. And if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you know every time I put out some fresh content for either this PK, the Blackstone, the Char Griller, or the Pit Boss. Thank y'all so much again, and we'll see y'all in the next video.